So we all had a long coaching career with some good points, some things that we had done that, that showed that we knew what we were doing and, and whatever. What I'm going to talk about are things we talked to the Olympians about and things that we got from the Olympians. And each year, or each four year period when we pick an Olympic team, we spend a lot of time talking to the Olympians, finding out what they think got them there. What did they think made them one of the top scorers? If we can get a Michael Phelps to talk about what he thinks made him great, then there are things that you guys maybe could model, things that would help you become a better scorer. The three things that we talked to the Olympians about and got back from them was what they felt were really important. Number one was coaches. They felt their coaches were incredibly important. And they felt that they created really good relationships with their coaches where they listened carefully, they took what the coaches gave them, and then they would interact with the coach about what else could they do to get better. How to swim their race as well, how to improve their technique, how to do the different things. And I can't stress this enough because as an athlete and then as a coach, I saw both sides of it really clearly about how important it was. When I went to coaches when I was an athlete and they gave me things and I worked on them and I realized how much I improved because that coach took the time to tell me what I needed to do to get better. And then later, as I was a coach, and talked to my athletes about what they could do and watching them improve and become really successful because they took the information I gave them and responded. Number one thing, most important thing is your coach. Coach knows more about your swimming than anybody in the world. Now, that's a really important thing. I've had people say, well, can you watch my breaststroke when I'm visiting a team like this? And it's like, talk to your coach. Your coach knows you much better than I would ever know. Even though they may not have been coaching as long, they know you better, and that's the important thing. Second thing, attendance. The most important important other thing you can do is be as many practices as you can come to. And it's really interesting. When I remember talking to Michael Phelps about this and we were talking to Brendan Hansen, and both of them had the same response. Why would I want to not do practice? Why would I not want to come to practice when my coaches are going to be giving me advice on how I could get better, where I'm going to be training, getting in better shape, learning my races better, and surrounded by my teammates? Why would I want to be anywhere else? If I want to be a great swimmer, that's the recipe. Listen to your coach, be at practice as many times as you can be at. And Michael Phelps at 10 years old was a 100 percenter. He never missed a practice from 10 years old to 24. Brendan Hansen told me at 12 years old, he made up his mind he would never miss a practice because he wanted to be great. Was he great? World record holder, American record holder, undefeated in college over a four year period, NCAA champion. I'd say he was great. Two Olympic teams and 102 in a press trip. Um, I'm not saying right now you guys should all say, I'm going to 100% workouts, but you should sort of look towards that as a goal. Maybe by 15, 16, if swimming is your sport, then embrace it fully and do everything you can to become the best you can be. Third thing, and we were amazed by this. We were amazed how important this was to coaches. And that was how important your teammates are to you in practice. How important people that you train with every day can create you becoming a much better singer. Little things, just by saying, great job, high five. Little things that your teammates do to you and little things that you do to your teammates make a huge, huge difference. This guy right here, put your hand up. In practice, I'm in practice with him. We're doing a set of 20 50s on 50. He beats me on every single one of them. And every one of them, I'm telling him what a great job he's doing. At the end of practice, I reach across the lane line, I high five him and tell him, you made me better today. I don't look at him like a threat. I don't look at him like somebody that I don't like or I don't respect. I look at him like it's a teammate who's helping me become a better swimmer. And right now, he's better than me, but my goal is someday I will be better than him. And he's helping me become a better swimmer. And I help him become a better swimmer by acknowledging you're doing a great job. Thank you. Does this make sense? Look at it like you're part of a team that you want everybody to get better. You want everybody in the group to get better. Of course, you want to become the one that is the fastest swimmer of the group. 
I mean, that should be maybe a natural response. But every day, come to practice helping everybody get better. And this whole group, we're training together. If you're working really hard to make everybody around you better, there's 30 some people every day trying hard to make you better. They're doing the things that are right. They're acknowledging when you do things well. They're motivating you to do things well. 1983, I was coaching a team in Southern California. And we were about 20 miles east of Los Angeles. And the next year, the Olympics, actual Olympics, were going to be in Los Angeles. I had 11 kids qualified to go to Olympic trials. And I wanted so much to have at least one kid make the Olympic team. And the reason I wanted that person to make the Olympic team, obviously, was for himself, but it was for the rest of the team. Because my thinking was, if we had somebody older somewhere made the Olympic team, everybody like you would think, wow, we had somebody on our team coached by the same coaches that I'm going to have trained in the same pool that I'm going to train in made the Olympic team. That makes you think a lot more like, I can be great. I could maybe not be an Olympian, but I can be great. I can maybe go to Olympic trials, or I can maybe go to nationals. And I looked at it like that, and I had a meeting, and I explained it to the athletes that way. I said, you have a chance to really be this leader of the team. And if you can do something exceptional, I mean exceptional, lifetime best time, uh, make finals, whatever it may be in the Olympic trials, you're going to motivate every member of the team. You're going to make everybody on the team better. And that would be such a cool thing to remember the rest of your life, that I was somebody that really made everybody better. I said, we have one rule. Nobody can miss a practice. Nobody can come in late. Nobody can leave early. Nobody can come out and say, i got to get out five minutes early. Everybody's going to be there at every practice all the way because you can't be a good teammate if you're not there. Even if it's the last five minutes of a workout, to me, you can't be a good teammate if you're missing for that five minute period. And everybody bought into it. And for 10 months, everybody was there every day, every practice, motivating each other. We went to the Olympic trials and we put three people on the Olympic team. Because people cared about each other. People every day were doing things to make people better. With one girl on the team that dropped from 1019 to 59 more 100 meter final which is remarkable, 2.2 second drop, whatever it was. And the thing that was amazing was there was a little 15 year old boy in the lane with her that every day was telling her what a great job she was doing. Every day was high-fiving her almost after everything she did, telling her what a great job she did. That 15 year old sophomore in high school dropped from 51.7 to 47.3 during that 10 month period, 4.4 seconds because he came to every practice. Some of them he never would have come to if I let him come to the ones he wanted to come to. He worked exceptionally hard. He tried to set an example for other members of the team to follow, but he was that great teammate. This works. If every day you come to practice trying to make everybody better, you will get better. It's a given. We know that. I mean, we've done tests with the Olympic team. People, the harder you work to be a good teammate, the more you're going to improve. The more when you get up on the blocks, you're going to be confident and you're going to race really fast because you're doing it not just for yourself, but you're doing it for your team, your teammates. Quickest way to improve, become a better streamliner. You probably hear this every day, every day, all the time. The better streamliner you become, you help every stroke, butterfly, back, press, free, individual medley. If you're a sprinter, a distance swimmer, it doesn't matter. You can improve your streamline, everything gets better. And probably everybody in this room can improve by a foot to a foot and a half in the next month, just by every night before you go to bed, stand above a mirror and streamline for two minutes. We walk around like this with our arms hanging down. We do everything, it's natural, but it's completely unnatural to becoming a better streamline. If you can work on becoming a better streamliner, you will get a lot faster. Michael Phelps said in 2008 that he spent 10 to 20 minutes every day working on streamlining. And it was away from the pool. It wasn't in the pool. It was away from the pool. It was driving. And most of it was in front of a mirror. Most of it was actually getting into a streamlined position and then pushing and stretching all the muscles to the shoulder. For Matt Breeders, how many people know who Matt Breeders? 
Matt Grievers, one of our great backstroppers, Olympic gold medalist in 2012, world championship, world champion in 2013. When he went to Northwestern University, first day of practice, he found out that his coach was going to be assistant coach Sergio Lopez. How many people know who Sergio Lopez is? Sergio Lopez, seven years later, after he met Matt Grievers, coach Caleb Dressel, Ryan Murphy, Joseph Schooley from their Bulls, Bulls school and turned them into the fastest swimmers in the world. Okay, because he knew how to talk to people about streamlining, about being faster underwater. And underwater is much faster than being on top of the water. Okay. First day of practice, Sergio Lopez calls Matt Reapers over after practice and tells him you're the worst streamlines I've ever seen for a college swimmer. If you want to get better, you've got to change your streamlines. You've got to come off the wall in a much more tight, concise streamline position. Matt Grievers wanted to become better. He wanted to become more successful. He said, what can I do? What? Give me some ideas. And the first thing that Sergio Lopez told him was exactly what I just got through telling you. Every night before you go to bed, stay in front of the mirror, get in the best streamline position you can get into, push up as hard as you can, for five seconds, relax for five, do that 12 times, two minutes of stream on. If you do that, you'll become a much faster swimmer. And I'm gonna give you a lot of things to do underwater in practice, things where you can work on your dolphin kicking underwater and stuff like that. First day of practice, first night after the first day of practice, Matt Grievers finishes his homework, he's getting ready to go to bed, he walks over to a little mirror in their dorm room, He's standing from the mirror, working on a streamlining. His roommate, who was not on the swim team, said, Matt, what are you doing? And Matt told him what he was doing, why he was doing it, what he hoped to get out of it. And his roommate was like really skeptical that standing from a mirror for two minutes a night stretching is going to make him a much better swimmer. So he got up, dragged his chair over, and moved Matt away from the sink in the mirror, up against the wall, said, Get in your best streamlined position. Matt got in the best streamlined position. They climbed up on the chair and drew a, drew a pencil at the top of Matt's fingertips. Six months later, they remeasured it. It was three and a half inches higher. He had elongated from fingertips to the ground by three and a half inches. He dropped his best hunter back from 48.8 to 45.6 in that six month period, which is unheard of for a national level summer. He went from being the 200th best backstroker in the country, 205th. He was worth it two minutes a night. At the end of a month, he put a whopping one hour in. He was training over 80 hours a month in the pool and weight room. He added one hour at a streamlining and it made the biggest difference. Six and a half weeks ago, I was down at University of Arizona and that's where Matt Reeves trains as a post -grad. He's 33 years old. I watch him come out on the deck, drop his mesh bag, drop his regular bag and go through a two and a half minutes stretching exercise exactly like I described to you guys before he got in the pool. And each time between the sets, he would get out of the pool when the coach is explaining what they were going to do next and everything like that. He'd go through about 30 seconds of streamlining just to practice it and go through the muscle memory part of it. Because he knew at his age, the only way he's going to get better is improve technique and become a better streamliner. You know, the only thing that's left to him, he's not going to get bigger and stronger by growing like you guys are. Those things were all past for him. He had to do things to get better. Why do your coaches work on your underwater? Why do your coaches feel it's better to be underwater when you go off the wall? Is it faster? Yeah. Most of you, if not all of you, even by now, probably are as fast or faster pushing off just off and kicking underwater than you can swim freestyle on top. Caleb Dressel. If he did a dive 25, it would be about 8.55 seconds for freestyle, about 8.65 for butterfly. He's 8.2 underwater. He's almost a half a second faster underwater. That's a body length, Caleb Dressel. And if he took pulse rate after he swam freestyle for one length and compared it with a pulse rate for doing dolphin kicking underwater, the dolphin kicking underwater would have a lower pulse rate, meaning it's easier, less effort, not tiring him out as much. But the biggest reason is you eliminate strokes. If 
you dive in and immediately pop up at the flags and swing butterfly, you may take 16, 17, 18, 19 strokes. But if you stay in the water and do seven kicks, six kicks or whatever, which may take you four or five seconds, you may eliminate four or five strokes. And in a hundred yard butterfly, that's 20 to 25 strokes you can eliminate by staying in the water. And you'd be a lot fresher, a lot faster at the end of that hundred yard butterfly and if it's the first hundred of a quarter I am, you're going to swim a lot faster on your pasture frustrators. Caleb Dressel was 16 years old. He was a pretty good butterfly. He had not worked on underwater as, as much as he certainly has now. And he broke 50 for a 100-yard butterfly. And he said, when I broke 50 for the first time between 15 and 16 years old, I took 30, between 35 and 38 strokes. Two years ago, he broke the American record, went 42 seconds eight seconds faster, and he took 19 strokes. He eliminated 18, 19 strokes by getting faster underwater and being much better when he came up, finishing his races with a lot more energy, a lot more power. Does this make sense? Keep working on underwater. Caleb Dressel didn't start working on that until he was 16. A lot of people like Ryan Lackey never started working on underwater until they were 19, and yet they became incredible. You guys are way ahead of them. Work on it now. Have it become part of your racing, that you want to be four kicks underwater, five kicks underwater, whatever it is. And as you get older and you get better at it and better at it, just keep extending like Caleb Dressel did, so you can get out the 15 meters and you're taking far less strokes, finishing your races a lot faster. Okay? It's really important. The coaches aren't just doing it because they think it works, they know it works. Everything we've done with students, we realize how important it is. If you're a decent backstroke, breaststroke, freestyle, not a very good butterfly, get better underwater. Because you can hide your just deficiency in butterfly, maybe lack of flexibility or something like that by getting better underwater and taking less strokes like Caleb Dressel did. So when you finish that butterfly, it's a lot easier and makes it back breast free a lot better. Never give up on technique, okay? As you get older, technique becomes even more important because as you reach that point where you're not actively really growing, getting taller, getting bigger and stronger naturally, it all comes down to things like technique, becoming more flexible, getting better underwater, the technique part of the whole thing. And you have to become more of a student and rely on your coaches to give you the advice and you work on that. When your coaches give you advice, work on it and go back to them and say, can you watch my backstroke? Remember you told me things I was doing wrong with it? I've worked on it. Am I doing it better? And what you're doing with your coaches you're creating this sort of relationship where your coaches become more active and care more about giving you new things to work on because they know you're going to take the time and energy to work on. Does that make sense? When you go to a meet, first thing you warm up is your brain. Okay? If you're going to race, the first thing you want to do is get your muscle memory thinking perfectly. You want your brain remembering this is exactly the way I want to swim. In 2004, we started noticing the fifth and sixth, seventh day of the Olympic Games, our Olympians weren't swimming quite as well as they started off in the beginning of the meet. And it wasn't they're getting out of shape, it wasn't that they weren't prepared properly. It was that they weren't spending time doing perfect technique work, drill work, and their warm ups at the meet. They dropped their yardage way down, they were tapering and they were forgetting to do the things that they should be doing, and that's perfect technique, drill drill work, different things like that. When you go to a meet, don't be afraid to get in, do some drills, do some perfect technique work, then go to your coaches, and your coaches are gonna try to take you through a regular prescribed remainder of the warm-up to get you ready for your first couple of races. This is really important. If you're in a meet, and ultimately, hopefully, you're going to be in three-day meet, four-day meet, five-day meet, Olympic trials, it's a seven-day meet, Olympic Games, an eight-day meet. And hopefully, you get that opportunity to be in those kind of meets. It's really imperative that you, all the way through that period, you are working on good technique every day. So when you race, and then after your race, you warm down with perfect technique. In 2008, 12, and 16, 
the Olympic trials in Omaha, I spent my entire time at the World Cup warm down. It was a lot easier to watch the meet because it was on a t television screen. It was about 30 feet wide by about 10 feet high, right on the other side of the warm up, warm down. When I could watch the races and then I could watch the athletes come in and warm down. Michael Phelps would come back from a race, break American record, world record, whatever it was, come back, get in the pool, spend 30 minutes warming down, working on perfect technique. Every one of the great swimmers did that. They knew how important it was to warm down, get their muscle memory back, and be ready to swim their next race, whether it was later that day or tomorrow morning. Stuff is really important. Last thing, I think this is probably the most important. The third thing I talked about with what we found from the Olympians, come to practice every day with an agenda, and an agenda is to help your teammates get better. Your agenda is to listen to your coach to do everything your coach tells you to really improve. It's a secret to getting better. And I think we do a great job of giving out information, but we don't do a good job of making you understand how important it is for you to do those things. Motivate your teammates. Make every day important for your teammates, and your teammates will make every day important for you. If you, can, if you can do things every day to make everybody around you better, you will become a much better swimmer, and you will create this sort of atmosphere where everybody every day is helping you become a better swimmer and more successful. Any questions? No questions. We have a question up here in the front row. Yeah. Oh,